So we are going to look at reference ranges and confidence intervals. And or I could say confidence intervals for data and confidence intervals for population parameters. If I can just remind you, don't forget to use the practice Dallas tests, which will help you consolidate your understanding here. And to recap on what we said last time, the whole idea is that you have a statement, you have a data, you have data, a sample of data about some phenomenon. But you wish to make a general statement about the population that generated the data. And the first thing to note, always the first thing to note, if you've got the data from a randomized experiment, you may be able to make a causal claim, whereas if it's an observational study, it's just circumstantial evidence. The data handling and statistical tests and interpretation is exactly the same in both cases, but it's the design of the study that lets you say whether something may be causal or whether it's just circumstantial. And we also said that scientific reproducibility is very important. So it is important in a study that you understand the statistical results, but one study is unlikely to live entirely on its own. It will need to be reproduced. And something that has helped with, in that regard since the year 2000 has been pre-registration of clinical trials, which made a huge difference. Now, you have two ways of making this general statement, which more formally is called inference. You can either use a hypothesis test or a confidence interval. And a hypothesis test requires that you state a null hypothesis and choose a primary outcome and collect some data, perform the test, p-value less than 0 0.05, you can reject the null hypothesis. Here, we're going to look at a specific example around confidence intervals. And for inference purposes, confidence intervals for parameters of interest, such as what is the population mean reduction in blood glucose, that's what lets you make a statement both about the statistical significance of the results, um, but also that the added value you get from confidence intervals is you can make a statement about the practical significance of the results. So we're going to look at reference ranges and confidence intervals in this video. And I'm assuming that you're familiar from the distant past with summary statistics such as the mean, the median and the mode. But I'm going to spend a little bit of time in this lecture making sure we're clear about the difference between the standard deviation and the standard error. And in terms of jargon, the, the, this, is, this is thinking about the differences between populations and samples. So the sample is, is the set of data you have in front of you, ideally a random sample. And the conceptual framework is that this sample has been taken from a larger population. And we can calculate sample statistics that tell us what's happened in the sample, but we want to make a statement about what might be the truth in the population. So the first thing we can do uh, is, is, is a, a confidence interval for the data. And these are hypothetical data, but they are based on real um, published, published reference values. And we're looking at reference, a reference range for red blood cell count. So, so red blood cell count uh, so what's happened is the laboratories, laboratories would take a number of samples from healthy volunteers, find the sample mean, and add and subtract two times the sample standard deviation. In, in other words, the, the lower end of the reference range is the sample mean minus two standard deviations. The upper end is the sample mean plus two standard deviations. And I've repeated this four times looking at different simulated samples of data and we can see roughly what's going on most of the data lie within that reference range it, it is approximately very close to almost a 95 percent confidence interval mean plus or minus two standard deviations so in theory 95 percent of patients should have a red blood cell count 95 percent of healthy people should have a red blood cell count that lies in this 
reference range or within a 95% confidence interval for the data. So this is, this is a statement about the variability that we expect to see in the real world and it's based upon the standard deviation. So sample mean, uh, you, you are very familiar with, you have some numbers, you sum them, you divide by the number of numbers. So you know how to calculate the sample mean. The difference is we now want to be able to estimate the population mean. What was the mean in the population that generated the data we're looking at? And the population mean is an abstract idea. M maybe you could think of this like, like blood counts are blood counts came out of some computer somewhere with uh, that, that has a data generating mechanism. And what you want to know is what value was dialed into that data generating mechanism that gave you the results you have in, in front of you. And this, this hypothetical value is called a population mean. So as well as red cell counts following a distribution pattern, we also believe if we got different samples that the sample means would follow some kind of distribution pattern get a different sample you would get a slightly different sample mean so how are you able to use that to make a statement about the population mean and the whole idea is that we can construct a 95 percent confidence interval for the population mean red blood cell count using a similar formula x bar the sample mean plus or minus two times the standard error of the mean and the formula for the standard error of the mean is simply the stand sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the sample size. And if, we, if, if you work with that a little bit, that should make some sort of intuitive sense because the more data you have, the smaller this standard error is going to be because you're dividing by the square root of n. You're dividing the standard deviation, which is a a natural property of variation in nature, but you're dividing that by the square root of the sample size. So the bigger the sample size, you think you should be able to make a better estimate of the population mean. There should be less variability in your sample to sample. Um, you're collecting sample means from different samples. These should be much less variable if they're coming from bigger sample sizes. But the key thing to understand is that Standard deviation and standard error, although they're very similar titles, are very, very different things. Standard deviation is a characteristic of variation in nature. And standard error is something to do with a, 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 a statistical process whereby you're collecting data and summarizing it. And you're trying to understand the distribution of a summary, a single summary point of those data. So there are similarities and differences. What's the reference range that, that you will become very familiar with is essentially a confidence interval for the data. And it's telling you how much variation exists in the real world in blood samples. It uses the standard deviation to calculate this. And it's a statement about something you can see. So reference range, data, standard deviation. On the other hand, the confidence interval for the mean is a statement about what you think the population mean might be. And this uses the standard error, and it's a statement about something you can't see. So uses are, um, if a patient produces a blood test outside the reference range, you will send them for further investigation. And the interesting point here is, you don't know whether they're ill or they're one of the 5% of healthy people who will lie outside the range. But again, the formula, sample mean, plus or minus, two times the standard deviation. On the other hand, if you're investigating a drug treatment, you want to make a statement about the population mean. Does the use of this drug alter the population mean of a given biomedical marker? So you're not interested in how much variability there is in everyday life. In fact, variability in everyday life has now become a real nuisance. What you want to do is to be able to say the population mean, this magical dial that specifies um, what, what a typical value should be. Um, 
has that been shifted by application of some kind of drug or other therapy and for that you use mean plus or minus two times the standard error and just to kind of illustrate this graphically looking at lymphocyte counts and again it's computer generated but based on real values and the top the top histogram is based on a sample of 50 the bottom histogram on a sample of 5000 and the idea is the reference range the blue dashes the blue dashed lines they're the same and they're wide because that's nature there's variation there are people quite healthily living merrily with 1 billion lymphocytes per liter and there are people merrily living perfectly healthily with just you know 4 uh, billion lymphocytes per liter but the, the big difference is when you look at the green lines the, the green solid line denotes the sample mean and the green dashed line denotes the confidence interval for the population mean and you can see as the sample size gets bigger uh, we have a more precise estimate of the population mean it's it's somewhere in the range between those two dashed green lines and again intuitively that makes sense to us that if the sample size is better we ought to be able to know something more precisely so what do you need to know uh, strictly speaking just in case you ever end up checking calculations in the computer the relevant number is not two times the standard deviation or the standard error for larger sample sizes it's closer to 1.96 so if you're ever checking the calculations and they're not quite tallying that that'll be why but in terms of just understanding and memorizing two is close enough and you need to know that reference ranges are making a statement about natural variation in the data there is nothing good or bad about big or small variation it's just natural it's what it is on the other hand standard errors or confidence intervals for the mean are helping you make a statement about this hypothetical population mean and you do this because you want to compare treatments or risk factors and you can make confidence intervals for the mean narrower by increasing the sample size if you can afford this so reference ranges which are in other places other disciplines known as confidence intervals 95% confidence intervals and confidence intervals for parameters such as the population mean they're the two topics we've looked at here